In this video, I'll show you how to fill or extend cells based on a single cell value using VBA. In our example, we have a mortgage amortization table, which shows how our balance, interest and principal change over time. This table is currently displaying 360 months or 30 years worth of data, as our term is 30 years. If, however, we change the term to another figure, like 20 years, the table doesn't adjust. Instead, it still shows 360 months instead of 240 months or 20 years, and it also has all of these NA values. What we want to do in this video is make this table dynamic so that when we change the mortgage term, the amortization table adjusts to reflect the change. To do this, we're firstly going to calculate our outputs, which we will use later to tell Excel until which cell we want to extend our table to. Following this, we'll then enter Visual Basic and write some codes to make the table dynamic. Finally, we will link the codes to the mortgage term input cell so that the code executes as soon as we change the mortgage term without requiring any button. We're going to revert this back to the original term of 30 years. Firstly, we need to calculate the cell address of the final cell in our table. To do this, we need to tell Excel the row and column number. The row which contains the final cell is row 374. In other words, it's 30 years times 12 months plus 14, as there are 14 rows before the first period. To find the column, we can use the column function and take the reference cell which is on the edge of the table. To find the cell address, we will use the address function, first inputting the row and then the column. So the address we want VBA to toggle down to is F374. Now if we change the term to say 20, the address changes accordingly. To easily refer to this cell, we can change its name to final cell. This is important as we will refer to this cell address in our VBA code shortly. Next, we can start building our macro, which extends the table based on this cell address. To do this, let's enter the Developer tab and click Visual Basic. Let's insert a module and let's give our macro a meaningful name like extend term. We will also declare a variable. We're going to declare the final cell as a string and the value of this variable will be equal to the value of the cell address in the cell final cell, which we worked on earlier. Next, we're going to decompose this macro into two sections. Firstly, we're telling Excel to select the cell containing period 11, which is B25. And then we want Excel to drag that selection to the right so that the entire row containing period 11 is selected. The reason we've chosen period 11 is because it would be unreasonable to expect a mortgage to have a term lower than a year. We're then telling Excel to select all cells below period 11 within the table and to delete them. It's best to explain why we first delete the rows below a certain period with an example. If the table currently shows 30 years worth of data, and we change the term to 20, then if we don't delete the cells below before filling the cells to show a term of 20, the table will still show a term of 30. Therefore, to avoid this, we first delete the cells below before filling them with the up-to-date number of rows. Let's now move on to part two of this code, which is where the final cell value comes in. We're telling Excel to select B24 to F24 
which contains period 10, and to then toggle these cells down to the final cell address. The reason it's B24 to F24 instead of B25 to F25 is because the latter will have been deleted in the first part of the code above. Once we've done this, we're telling Excel to select cell C8, which contains the term again. To improve the VBA code further, we can wrap application screen updating around our code. This ensures that the screen doesn't flash when our code runs, making it look more seamless and professional. Now, if we change the term to 20 years instead of 30 years, and then click play, our table updates to show 240 months instead of 360 months. Equally, if we change the term to one year and then click play, it updates to show 12 months or one year, which means that the code is working well. However, you may have noticed that it's slightly inconvenient to constantly have to enter the VBA editor and then click play. It would be much smoother if the code could run automatically when the cell value of the mortgage term changes. To make this work, we can enter the fixed mortgage sheet within the VBA editor and enter the following code. This is saying that when cell C8, the cell containing the mortgage term, is changed, then we want our macro extend term to be executed. So let's close Visual Basic and let's test it out. Let's change the term to two years. As you can see, the code runs automatically without having to click play in the VBA editor and it gives us 24 months. The same goes for if we change the term to say 30 years. As you can see, it populates the table with 360 months, which is exactly what we wanted. So that's how you can extend a table based on a single cell value in Excel. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful and subscribe to the Excel Hub for weekly Excel tutorials, techniques and examples.